Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, hopefully you saw my previous video on the Kemper stage where I just talked through the basics of loading up um, amps and profiles. I've had a request to do another one on effects, so let's cover that today. Now, first of all, you're going to hate me for saying it, but read the manual. I'm not even kidding. The manual is really good. The manual has so many little things in it that I've, I've learned even just last night reading it. Uh, really useful. Do read it several times. Do watch the videos they have on their YouTube channel. But then once you've done that, subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube channel and watch these videos because I might cover something differently. But the way I want to approach this today is to show you how I'm using it. Now, there's many ways to use this as with any digital pedal, but it might be interesting for some users coming from amps or other pedals to see how I'm using it myself. So we're in browser mode. We've chosen some amps in the previous video. Now we want to load them into a performance and assign effects to make the performance more interesting, right? I mean, that, that jam I did at the beginning of this video could not have been done without this unit unless I had a pedal board with those reverbs and delays and things. It was a very ambient um, sound, wasn't it? Not, not something I normally do, but I know a lot of guys that play in church use that kind of stuff. Obviously, you two tribute bands use it. So let's get into it. Let's click performance. Choose a clean performance. It comes with some in there so you can see how they've loaded them up. I actually deleted mine. So number one is my performance. I haven't named it, but I advise you to name it. And in number one, I'll click number one here, and I've used browse and selected my clean amp from, I've got, I'm in favorites right now because I chose it for last time. So clean amp is in number one and distorted amp is in number three. That's the Friedman. All right, great. So. Look at the board, one, two, three, four, and five are your different amps in one performance. So one might be super clean, two might be slightly dirty, three might be crunchy, four might be your heavy metal sound, five, I might reserve that for my acoustic, like I might set that up just for an acoustic um, kind of patch. So really one performance can do everything that I need, which I think is pretty great. Um, one thing to be aware of, on each number, there's also two LEDs. The top LED is your morph mode. And you can see that by the morph light, it becomes illuminated. So just be wary of that because I don't want, I don't want you to be working on a sound and you're switching between morph. It's like having a 1A and a 1B. So make sure you're always on 1A for now. Try and stay away from the morph thing. The morph feature just allows you to turn up delay trails, turn up volume, turn up gain, things like that. That allows you to ramp between 1A and 1B. So you can go from a clean sound to a heavy sound and it can automatically morph between them or you can use an expression pedal to do that, uh, an external one that you plug in. So very useful feature if you're into that kind of music. If you're not, I would try, uh, avoid it for now just to, to remove complication. So number one, bottom LED. And then let's look at the, the signal flow here. They've actually laid it out to do the work for us. Input, obviously your guitar or bass. A, B, C, D, these are usually, these are before the amp. They're usually uh, distortion, overdrive, compression, anything that you want before, to hit before your amplifier, okay? Especially if the amplifier has gain in it. Amp and cab must be on if you're using XLR, right? Or it will sound horrible. And then you've got X mod delay and reverb. Now, you don't have to put reverb in reverb. You don't have to put delay in delay. These are just simply four effects, okay? But they, they label them just to help you out, which I actually like. Again, as someone that doesn't use many effects, I like to know that that's my reverb, that's my delay, that's my modulation, that's my X, whatever X is gonna be. It's just, I just find it useful, but you can ignore it. You can put a sticker over there if you want, do your own thing. All right, no, don't do that, but you could do. All right, so that's the signal flow. Let's. Let's see what we got here. I mean, the only problem with loading up a profile can be a problem is that you have stuff in there already. So we can see what that is and either keep it or get rid of it. Let's see what X is. So press and hold on it. If you press it once, it will turn it on or off. If you press and hold on it, it will tell you what it is. So this is a pure booster. Now the pure booster is awesome. It's a volume effect and it's just a volume boost. Really useful for when you solo. Some people like those to be before the amp because that will then increase the gain when they turn it on. I just want my solo boost at the end of the signal just to boost everything. Basically like someone on the mixing desk turning up your level for when you play. So everything just gets louder. 
I would normally put that right at the end, but just for labeling purposes, I'll leave it there. It's kind of cool. And it's on plus 2.2. Let's leave that for now. I will turn it off. Oh, look, the red dot indicates that this switch turns this one on or off. Okay, that's cool. You see that on the left side? On, off. And then the reverb, I definitely want a reverb or my performances will not sound good. Let's hold on that. Natural reverb. Okay, we'll use the browse control here to go through. You see reverb is in the type and you can change the type with the page buttons um, very easily once you're browsing. You can change the type. Um, and then you can use the browse to select. These are actually presets, a lot of these. So that weird ambient one I had at the beginning was a preset. I like that one. Um, but for a clean sound, you might want the spring. You might just want to choose natural. It's just, it's just the basic. Natural reverb is just the basic patch. And you can then adjust it all yourself. But if you like presets, it's good to try the presets. The two controls I'm most... Um, concerned with our mix and time the first two here you know if, if, if it sounds way too wet then turn the mix down if it sounds like it's going on too long turn the time down if you read the manual all these parameters are explained in detail but yeah mix and time are what i would use to, to make it not as uh, in your face not as well actually it would make it more in your face if you turn them down wouldn't it because it's it's too much it's too wet okay so definitely want that reverb in there obviously you'll have your guitar plugged in You'll be playing and you can audition it. I'm not going to do that for the video, but obviously you want to do that. Another cool thing about the looper, a little quick tip, you can actually go into settings and move the looper from the end of the chain to the beginning. So when, uh, when you take out of the box, the looper's at the end, so you can jam and make songs. But if you put the looper at the beginning of the chain, it's like you're sitting there playing the guitar and you haven't got to play the guitar because the guitar's being played for you. If you've recorded it, then you can make changes and hear what they'll sound like. Very, very cool tip and very cool for like trying sounds out. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a volume boost assigned to a pedal, a reverb that's always on. And I will just put something in the beginning here just to show you. Let's put a compressor in. So again, hold down, browse. And you can either browse through all of them or use the page across. We go to compressor. There's a soft compressor. I'll use that one. All right, great. So that's on. And again, I want that on all the time. So I'll leave it on. Now, one thing I forgot to cover was the input. Very important. Just hold down on that. Again, as I said in the previous video, I've got my clean sense on eight. So my, it all depends on your guitar. For my guitar, I need more clean signal because the distortion um, amps seem to have more volume. Um, they seem to perceive more volume. And I have to have my noise gate up. Again, read the manual, the noise gate, they say, set it so the noise, when you listen carefully, disappears and no more. If you do any more than that, you might start losing sustain. So again, noisy single coil pickups, but I love them. Um, I've got the noise gate on three. So three and eight. And then I've used this lock mode. Now what does lock do? It's a very powerful tool because I want that for everything because I'm using that guitar all the time. I'm not using the telly right now. You can see behind me. I'm going to press lock. And what that does is you get the lock icon and it's, that will be the same for everything now. I haven't got to think about it again. So that's really cool. So I've locked that. So I've locked the input. And in fact, if you hold down on lock, you can see what is locked. Oh, this is locked as well. Now, why is that locked? Well, I actually want that volume boost on all five patches, all five stomps here, and that's being locked, which means if I store this and go to another, if I go to number three, look, oh, it's still there. So I haven't got a program that again, ah, now that can be very useful, can't it, if you think about it. But you see that white LED, that means it's locked. There's also a lock on the boost on the signal flow at the on the screen here. There's another signal flow indication that's locked. And if you hold down lock, it will also show you what's locked. So that's locked. Very, I mean, yeah, okay, you get your head around it. It's not hard. Just get your head around it. But that lock thing is so cool. Let's say I want that reverb on every patch. Let's just lock the reverb. Go into the reverb by holding it down, press lock. Back out of it, store it. Now, when I go to number three, it's the same reverb, it's been locked, okay? 
that's not on the foot switch. All right, cool. So you can go through and add what you want. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. I've got my compressor, my clean sound. Um, despite changing the input sense, if you hold down on amplifier, you can change the volume of the amplifier. If you have to, in case these aren't all like balanced, you can change it there. I've got my stomp that turns on that, and I've got my reverb on all the time. Now you can add more stomps, of course. But let's move on to the next patch. Save it, store, and move on to number three. All right, so the great thing about number three is we already have that same reverb and that um, volume boost. We haven't got to do those again. Very cool. Um, oh, and also we could lock the compressor. So anything you use on all your patches, just lock them, you're done. Lock the input, you're done. All you've got to do now in number three is add effects, either add effects that you want on there that you don't want on the first one, or, or change effects that you want, say, a different reverb on this one to the first one. But I mean, hopefully you'll just use the same effects for everything, imagine that. Just put them in, lock them, and you're done. All right, so let me just show you a couple of things. First of all, I'm gonna show you how to copy something. So you see effect B here. Again, I'll press on it. It's a green screen. Uh, it's like a tube screamer. If I press and hold on it, it says copy stomp. If I press that, it'll copy it. If I then press and hold on an empty block here, it will say, do you wanna paste it? So that's good to know, but I am not gonna do that. I'm just gonna get rid of it. Well, how do I get rid of that? Well, you, could either, e you can either copy and paste a blank one on top of it, or you can just page across and go to empty, and now it's gone. Press return to go back. So that's been cleared out. Okay, so what do I want in this patch? Hmm. Yes, I definitely want a delay. In fact, I want a delay on the first one as well, but let's just see here. What delay do we have here? A two-tap delay. Again, browse through the presets. Oh, reverse. Reverse could be fun, right? There's, there's a lot of really cool sounding delays in this thing. Just you got to sit and go through them all. I'll use a tape delay. Again, parameters will appear. We've got mix, most importantly, a note value, and tap tempo. Now, tap tempo is really useful to keep your delays in time. You just tap it to the beat as you're playing with your foot. You can also just hold it down, and it does a thing called beat scanner, where it kind of guess what the tempo is. Honestly, the best way to do it is just to tap a couple of times to do it. And that can be per, per uh, number, so, for, so independent of one, two, three, four, or it can be for the whole thing. You just go into rig to set that. I would set it same for the whole thing. So if I tap in on the clean sound and I switch to number three, then it stays in that time. It won't change. So that's, a, that's up to you. It's, but it's great to have that option. I'm glad it's in there. Most of these options are in there. You just got to read the manual to find them. But please be aware of that. It's very, very useful. Another, another little tip for you. All right, so where was I? This is all cleared out. I'm, adding, I'm auditioning a delay. I've got it, great. Just a couple more things I want to show. So delay, I want it on this, on this foot switch. How do I do that? Just press the delay and the foot switch at the same time. Aha, it's gone green. And if I press it, it's on, it's off. I want to remove it, just do the same thing again. Gone. That's really cool, right? Very simple. Now, what if you want two things? You see there's two LEDs. Again, like, like this, these have two, this has two as well. So that's delay. But what does this mean then? Oh, so, okay, so the reverb could be on there as well. So just do the same thing again. Now they're both illuminated. And check this out. This is white and this is off. This is white and this is off. So in this mode, what you've got here is the, the delay is on, the reverb's off, you press it, the reverb's on, the delay is off. So it's an either or thing. That's cool. But if you turn the delay on, you can have both effects off or both effects on. And you can actually assign a third one. I just figured this out. You can actually assign a third one to it. So although there's not three lights, you can do the same thing. You can have three effects come on at once. Very powerful. Again, I probably wouldn't use it. And I feel like a lot of this stuff is aimed more at the shoegaze, um, church, um, ambient, experimental kind of playing. Although that is a, obviously a very valid thing these days. But 
I don't want the reverb on it. I just want it to turn on my delay. I want reverb on all the time. So I hope, I hope, I hope that's starting to make sense. In my mind now, I've spent a bit of time with this. It makes a lot of sense. So you got one effect, two effects. You can lock the effects. You can copy them in different places. And okay, it's not as easy to copy things around as in other pedals. But here's the first thing. The editor is coming. And when the editor comes out, this will all be unnecessary. But it will still be necessary because when you're on stage, you won't have the editor with you. So please learn how to do it this way. And then when the editor comes out, you can just fly through on your computer and program stuff, move stuff around, done. But on stage, you can still, you'll still know how to change stuff on stage if you haven't got your, your, your computer with you, which you probably, probably won't, right? So, but I, don't, but I don't think it's difficult at all. Just remember to store all the time as well if you're doing stuff. Okay, now that I've got patch one here, which is my clean sound, and then number three is my heavy sound with a delay available. Now that really didn't, didn't take very long at all, did it? It really is very simple to do. I encourage you just to load up an empty performance and build something and practice copying, pasting, try the presets out, try different effects out, and then choose what you want. Um, you know, just plan, like when you build a real pedal board, plan how you want to use it yourself. Um, so that's everything. And then just as a bonus tip, if you want to do what I did in that loop at the beginning of the video, well, this is how I did it. I was in reverb and there's another button up here. It says freeze. If you press, if you play a chord and press that, it will hold that chord forever. This is so useful. Now, one problem with that is it will turn off the reverb in order to do that. But you can always load another reverb in order to play over the top. Or you can freeze it, go into looper, record it, play it, come out of looper, and then turn freeze off. So play that again. If I, if, if I say that too quickly, just play that part again. But that's how I did it in the beginning of the video. So I had the, the freeze going as a loop. And I played over the top and I ramped up the, the reverb to make it really ambient. And in fact, that's all I did. I could have, I could have added some more effects too, made it really out there, like really Pink Floydish. but I, th I thought it was fine as it was. Um, yeah, so that freeze effect is cool. And that freeze can actually be applied the same way. Boom, now I've got freeze on a foot switch. So I love this pedal for practicing. It's, this pedal is so good for people that want to practice the guitar because that tuner, can always have the signal going through it, the actual patch itself, and you can watch the tuner and, and practice your intonation. And then, once you've done that for a, a 30 minutes, you can use the looper and the freeze to make a pad of like an, like an A and an E note, that's the root and fifth, and then practice bending over that in the key of A, A major, A minor, whatever you want to do. Really, I just, I, I, they've got stuff in here that the other guys haven't thought of that are so small, but things that I wanted for years. And this can easily be, easily be imp implemented into other pedals. And I hope other people steal the ideas because then everything will just get better, right? When I say steal, I mean steal in a nice way, of course, yes. Now, in the future, you can plug in a two button foot switch, which you could then have two more buttons here. You can have an expression pedal, and of course that can be on the left or the right side. It can be a volume control, it can be a wah-wah, it can be a pitch bender. So you can really add stuff to this, make it even more complicated. And then you can make another performance with different effects in it. But I still love the unit as someone that's coming from just an amp, but just wants four effects, you know, up to four effects here, up to four effects here, a great tuner, a great looper, and great sounding amps. And I think that's where this thing excels. So I hope you learned something today. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, keep reading those manuals. Isn't that boring though, to read a manual? Until next time, make some great ambient Pink Floyd tribute songs. All right, bye-bye.